Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox, and today we are keeping this video just nice and casual. It's a very informative video though, so I definitely suggest sticking your way through and watching it because you are gonna learn about so many new interior design styles if you already didn't know about them. In the past on my channel, I've done a video where I share with you guys how to find your own design style, and when I did that video, a lot of the design styles were pretty generic. They were more like modern farmhouse, coastal, boho, industrial, essentially a lot of mainstream design design styles that a lot of people and a lot of stores sell products that go hand in hand. But today I want to go into eight really interesting design styles that are a little bit different, definitely a bit more trendy, but I just have been loving them so much and I'm definitely going to be grabbing bits and elements of each to incorporate in my spaces as I work on them. I'll make sure to share a bunch of examples for each and share with you guys kind of how you can get that look in your own space and some tips and tricks that I would do to create that look. And last thing before jumping into today's video is that we are having a little sale over over on LoneFox.com and I have been putting on so many new products you guys so there is a ton of stuff over on the site but if you use code April you actually get 15% off at checkout and domestic orders over $100 ship for free so definitely take advantage of that it's gonna be throughout the month of April and I'll link the shop below but let's go ahead and dive on into our first interior design style our first trend that we are going to be talking about is one that I have been gravitating towards the most lately and that you guys might have seen around my apartment and that is Vintage Revival. I've been avidly thrift shopping and antique shopping just to go and mix in old pieces to make them just feel new and that's really the essence of Vintage Revival. It's a mix of older pieces mixed with more modern silhouettes or modern styles that just kind of revive the older pieces to make them feel new but they still kind of bring that character and that age and just the overall vibe of a vintage piece to your space. And I kind of feel like Vintage Revival is more of an overarching umbrella and underneath that you have different styles of Vintage Revival because you could totally do like a Bohemian Vintage Revival or an Art Deco Vintage Revival. There's different ways you could take it and that's really based off of the era of furniture that of course you're getting or that is vintage that you're incorporating and also the style that you're going for in your space. But Vintage Revival is one of my personal favorites. I also love it because I feel like a lot of the color tones are more moody which is something that I gravitate towards a lot. So you have a bunch of muddy neutrals but then you also have that accent pop of color that just makes it feel kind of vintage. I feel like in a lot of antique or vintage spaces you see a lot of color use and I feel like in modern interiors you don't see that much color use so adding that pop of color is a great way to incorporate that style. Honestly the key to getting this design style is just thinking outside of the box and mixing old with new. Our second design style is a really, really unique one, and it's definitely more so for a very specific person, and that is dark academia. Now, this is kind of like a fashion aesthetic and just an overall like photo aesthetic for a long period of time, but it's actually been making its way into interior design, and it has been for about six months or so, but I feel like lately I've been seeing a lot more references to dark academia in interior design photography. And instantly, the one reference point that I could say for dark academia, which I feel like kind of shapes it, is Harry Potter. I feel like Dark Academia is like an elevated Harry Potter. You get those really, really dark tones, extremely moody elements, and also Dark Academia is kind of like shaped around literature and knowledge in general. So a lot of books are used, and I feel like Harry Potter is a great reference point to kind of get you guys to understand that style a little bit more. The color palette really does lean dark. So you have dark browns, dark grays, and even blacks mixed in with like subtle metallic touches like brass, but then you also have some textiles and patterns like wool, tweed, and leather, which are really popular in dark academia design. Also something else to keep in mind for this design style is that normally there's a lot of items used. So it's almost like a maximal design style where there's a bunch of decor. You have shelves just filled with antique pieces, ornate frames. If you can kind of picture like a 1930s like science room or a room that you would create potions in, that is dark academia. So just a lot of excess of items, but it overall creates the vibe of this like kind of dark, moody, and just eclectic space. It's definitely not for everybody, but I definitely feel like I drew inspo when I did my horror movie room update. I painted it a super, super dark gray and incorporated just a lot of antique pieces and overall the vibe of this space kind of reads dark academia. Our third design style is one that you might have heard of before because it is becoming extremely popular and that is wabi-sabi design. Now wabi-sabi is actually a Japanese term meaning to find beauty in imperfection. So a lot of wabi-sabi style spaces, I'm gonna say wabi-sabi so many times, are very, very organic. They have a lot of natural elements to them, a lot of earthy tones as well. You see a lot of plants in these types of spaces, lots of wood, lots of organic touches, and definitely imperfection along the way. Something I kind of always think of when I think of wabi-sabi 
Wabi is whenever I go to Tulum, I really feel like a lot of spaces in Tulum have that Wabi Sabi feel to them because a lot of them are handmade and they use a lot of natural resources from the island, of course. So a lot of those spaces there have that really natural, organic, and perfect look that we love and a lot of people are trying to emulate in decor. For example, you see those really beautiful pottery pieces, antique pottery that has kind of the distressing on them. Those kind of add a Wabi Sabi element. They're imperfect, but they add that nice touch to a space. And unlike Dark Academia, Wabi Sabi design is normally on the more minimal side. So there's not a lot of pieces of decor, there's not a lot of accents, they really want the imperfections and the small details to kind of shine in these spaces. And if you want to add a similar look to your space, some things to maybe consider are natural elements to incorporate, organic shaped furniture pieces, interesting artwork that's still simple but interesting to look at, and a lot of more lived in materials such as washed linen, a boucle fabric that gives you that texture element but it doesn't give you that striking bold pattern or color, it just gives you that cozy feeling. Wabi Sabi really does embrace imperfection and kind of that cozy, lived-in aesthetic. Our fourth design style is known as Grand Millennial, but I also feel like it kind of references cottage core a lot, which was a design style in the past, and I just personally feel like they kind of go hand in hand, so we're calling this Grand Millennial and cottage core. And the best way I feel like you can describe this style is Granny Chic. So if you could imagine going into your grandmother's house and it's just nicely put together, there's lots of different elements in it, that kind of is a Grand Millennial style, but designers are now utilizing in a way to kind of take that look of collected items and mixing it with more of a modern take to create this really unique look known as Grand Millennial. Whenever I think of this design style, I think of a lot of interesting prints, a more softer color palette, but a lot of clashing colors at the same time. And also a bunch of furniture pieces that don't exactly go together, but in the end when you place them in the space, it just works. And I feel like this is actually one of the harder design styles to achieve because if you go overboard or you don't do enough, this design style will really just look unfinished or incomplete or honestly like kind of cheap. But if you do it in the right way and you really kind of focus on it and understand what Grand Millennial is and go in that direction, you can create such a uniquely designed space. A lot of elements that come with Grand Millennial are ruffles, tassels, velvet fabrics, brocade fabrics, just a lot of really interesting kind of older materials and older styles that are done in a more modern take and then used in forms of upholstery and forms of wallpaper. There's a bunch of wallpaper used in this style as well and I feel like a lot of the reference photos are going to give you more of an understanding because it definitely is a design style that's a little harder to explain, but it's more of a modernized granny chic. So definitely not an outdated look, definitely has more of a modern look to it. And there really is a sense of sustainability as well with Grand Millennial because a lot of these pieces are found at thrift stores. Just a lot of items aren't actually purchased for this style. You want them to have just character and age and just a story behind them. So a lot of the pieces are collected over the years and accumulated and then kind of designed together as opposed to going out and purchasing pieces for it. However, I know a lot of designers are recreating this look, so that's what you have to do to do so. But normally, there's a sustainability aspect to this in utilizing pieces that aren't brand new and more so outsourcing them from thrift stores or antique shops. This is actually one I've kind of touched on in a couple of the past, and this one is maximalism, but let me tell you kind of about the new maximalism. Of course, when you think of maximalism, you just think of a bunch of stuff in a space, and that is kind of what it means, but also at the same time, it's not like you're gonna over clutter your space with decor and furniture. That's not the case at all. The new maximalism style is honestly just going all out with colors, textures, patterns, decor, really going the full nine yards, but not taking it to the extreme of of turning your space into like what looks like a thrift store or something insane. Maximalism definitely has this very kind of optimistic and nostalgic vibe to it. There's just a bunch of layered patterns, really interesting, unique textiles and textures as well. That's a huge thing with maximalism. It doesn't solely mean maximizing your space with as much as you can put into it. It's more so maximizing what you visually see from your eye. So really using color wisely and using deep colors and deep tones and just maximizing every facet of the space. So going intense with your textures, intense with your colors, intense with your patterns, and intense with your furnishings. And the biggest takeaway that I love from maximalism is utilizing your wall space. So a lot of maximalized spaces have a bunch of artwork on the wall. They do gallery walls, collages, use wallpaper, um, art or wall decor on the wall as well. And just overall, they really maximize the use of their space and what they can do with it. Again, kind of a style that's hit or miss for some people, but I think it's a fun one to talk about. 
Our next design style is almost a little take from our previous Wabi Sabi, and this is called Japandi. And Japandi is actually one of the most increased searched design styles this year. Like it has increased like absolute crazy because it is such a beautiful aesthetic. And this is the mixture of Japanese and Scandinavian design. And this is an interior design style that again, mixes a lot of natural elements, a lot of minimalism, um, and just a lot of interesting, unique pieces to create a space that feels really natural, inviting, refreshing. There's a lot of imperfections, a lot of organic elements, natural kind of fabrications to pieces. But at the same time, the Japandi design style has a very organized and structured look to it. So a lot of the pieces in the space really just look like they're supposed to be there and never supposed to be moved. It has this very, very thought out look to it. There's a bunch of use of just simple, clean lines, very decluttered spaces. So an extremely minimal decor style in Japandi design, a lot of natural fabrics, warm and neutral textiles or textures. Another thing about Japandi design is kind of pulling from the Scandinavian aesthetic is that it uses a lot of white space. So there is a bunch of blank white space in Japandi design. And then you're mixing in again, a lot of those natural elements, light tone woods to those spaces. But also of course, adding in a couple of accent colors, primarily focusing on white, but adding in natural accent colors that kind of are more earthy tone. So greens, terracottas, browns, those are great accent colors to add, but very sparingly. There's an interior designer that I follow named Mason Truval, and I feel like he does such a great job at the Japandi style. Not all of his work is in that style, but I feel like some of it definitely leans in that direction a bit. And I think his use of minimalism, but still making the spaces extremely interesting is what I love about that design style. Working our way into our second to last design style, this one is known as Danish Pastel, which I believe I've touched on in the past on my channel. And I feel like I've also created a couple of DIY projects that fit under this kind of umbrella of design. And when I think of Danish Pastel, I think of pastel tones. I think of kind of bubbly furniture, curves, really simple, soft, linear patterns, graphics. I also think of acrylic, plastic, kind of shiny, glossy finishes. It has this very soft and feminine aesthetic to it. A lot of pastel tones are used, but a mixture of pastels. So you might use yellow and pink and green in one space and have a curvy wavy bench with a unique kind of gingham printed throw blanket. There's a lot of fun pattern play, but it has this really soft vibe to it. It's all more so about the color palette. I feel like when it comes to Danish pastel, you can really achieve the look of it by having the right color palette in the space. And the reason this is called Danish pastel is because these spaces are traditionally very minimal as well, which kind of lends to the Danish way of living. A lot of Danish people live a very simple, minimalistic, kind of happy, colorful lifestyle. And I feel like this style really represents that. And this design style was extremely popular across TikTok over the past year. If you scroll on that app, you have definitely come across DIY projects or people kind of taking on the Danish pastel style in their own home. If you saw those checkerboard tile tables, I think I even did one on my channel. I did nightstands actually. Those came from the Danish pastel style. And I feel like it's definitely been a style that was trending across TikTok, but now we're more so seeing it starting to make its way into big box stores in terms of decor and pieces that they're selling. So it's going to start making its way into spaces for sure. It's such a cute, more millennial Gen Z kind of aesthetic. And I feel like people of a younger demographic are definitely leaning more towards this style, but it definitely can be pulled into an older demographic or mixed into different styles at the same time. And our last design style today is one that a lot of you guys might have already heard of, but it's taken again to an extreme, and this is called monochromatic. And monochromatic means that you're using the same base color across your entire space, but this is done to a new extreme, like literally taking your floor, your walls, your furniture, your decor, every single element, like the same shade and hue of a specific color that you're going for for that space. And this can be done in so many different ways. You can have an extremely neutral monochromatic space, or you can have an extremely bold and bright monochromatic space. And when creating a monochromatic space, you definitely have to keep a lot of design elements in mind. So you're going to want to play around with the different shades of the color, the different textures of that color, different patterns that also relate to that color. You can also keep in mind scale and texture. So there's a lot of different elements that kind of create a monochromatic space and make it overall an interesting space in the end, because these spaces are all one color. They can definitely be different shades of that color. So let's say you wanted to do a fully blue bathroom 
You can use shades of navy and periwinkle and like sky blue and robin's egg blue. You can use different shades of it because they're under that same category of color. However, mixing different textures, patterns, shapes, silhouettes is what makes that style extremely interesting in the end. And something kind of interesting about monochromatic design is that it's actually pretty subtle on the eye. So even if you had a space that was full blue, you had an entire blue living room, everything in it. The thing about it is, is when you walk in the space, your eyes just adjusting to one tone of color. Whereas when you're walking into a living room with a lot of different styles in it or an eclectic space or a space kind of like Grand Millennial, for example, you have to take in all the patterns, all the colors, all the textures, all the different elements of that space. Whereas with monochromatic spaces, they're normally a little bit more calming on the eye and simple, but they still are super interesting because there's a lot of use of texture, of patterns, pattern, sheen, silhouette, scale, all the different design elements are thought about when doing monochromatic design, which I think, again, makes it a little bit more challenging, but it also does give you direction of sticking in one color palette. And that finishes off today's video. I hope that you enjoyed checking out some of these new design styles. And if you like any or multiple of them, definitely let me know in the comment section below. We can have a little chat down there, or if there's any design styles that you kind of feel like are maybe approaching into the industry or going to start making their way onto social media or just in the homes of us. Totally talk about it in the comment section below because I would love to know as well. I know that this video was a little bit more casual, but I hope that you guys still did enjoy. And if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. And you can also follow me over on Instagram and TikTok at Lone Fox Home. Don't forget to take advantage of our little sale over on LoneFox.com. You can take 15% off using the code April at checkout and orders over $100 or actually over $99 domestically ship for free which is amazing. But that was a lot of information. I'll let you guys have a little break from me and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye everybody.